ever held a pencil and wondered, what journey has this simple object undergone to reach my hand? This humble tool, so often taken for granted, has a story to tell. From the tallest tree to the finest point, a pencil's life is more intriguing than you might think. It's not just a piece of wood with a graphite center, it's a marvel of design and engineering. So, are you ready to uncover its secrets? Well, buckle up as we delve into the fascinating world of pencil production. The humble pencil begins its journey in a forest as a tree. Let's take a moment to appreciate the trees, specifically cedars, which give our pencils their start. Majestic and towering, these cedars have spent years, sometimes decades, growing and preparing for their role in our story. When the time is right, lumberjacks carefully select and fell these trees, respecting the forest's ecology as they do so. After the tree has been felled, it's not a simple case of loading it onto a truck and sending it to the factory. No, the process is far more intriguing. The logs are first stripped of their bark, revealing the smooth, creamy wood beneath. This is the raw material that will eventually become our pencils. But before we get there, let's not rush ahead. Once the bark is stripped, the logs are cut into smaller, manageable pieces. These pieces are then sent on their way to the factory, traveling by road, rail, or even river. Imagine the journey these pieces of wood undertake, leaving the forest and entering the world of industry. It's quite a transition. Upon arrival at the factory, these pieces of wood are then cut into thin slats. These slats are just the right size to hold the lead core of a pencil. It's a precise process requiring skill and attention to detail. Each slat must be perfect, not too thick, not too thin, just right. It's a long process from tree to timber. It involves many steps, each one crucial in its own right. But it's also a process filled with care and respect for the materials being used. From the lumberjack in the forest to the factory worker at the saw, everyone plays a role in helping the tree on its journey to become a pencil. Now we have our wooden slats, but we're far from having a pencil. What's a pencil without its lead? Let's see how that comes into play. The core of a pencil, often referred to as lead, is in fact a mixture of graphite and clay. The process of creating this lead is a fascinating blend of science and artistry. Let's dive into it. First, the graphite and clay are ground into a fine powder. This isn't just a simple case of crushing rocks though. The graphite and clay must be ground separately, each to a specific consistency to ensure the right balance of hardness and smoothness in the final product. It's a process that requires precision and care, and it's one of the key steps in creating a pencil that writes just right. Once the graphite and clay powders are prepared, they're mixed together with water. This forms a soft, malleable paste that can be shaped into thin cylindrical rods. The beginnings of our pencil lead, the next step, is baking. The rods of graphite and clay mixture are put into an oven and heated to high temperatures. This baking process hardens the rods and solidifies their form. The result is a strong, durable lead that's ready to be inserted into its wooden home. But how does the lead get inside the pencil? The answer lies in the wooden slats we discussed in the previous scene. A groove is cut into one slat. The lead is carefully placed into the groove and then a second slat is glued on top. The sandwiched slats are then compressed together, securing the lead firmly in place. It's a seemingly simple process, but one that requires a great deal of precision and care. Each step from grinding the graphite and clay to baking the rods and inserting the lead plays a crucial role in creating a pencil that's just right for writing. With the lead in place, our pencil is starting to take shape. We have our lead and our wood, but it's not quite a pencil yet, is it? It's time to shape and paint our future pencil, a process that is as intriguing as it is meticulous. Let's start with the shaping. The wooden slats that house our lead are carefully glued together. This is done in a very precise manner to ensure the lead is perfectly centered and protected. Once the glue has dried, the slats are then cut into pencil shapes. This might sound simple, 
but it's a precise operation that requires attention to detail. The machines used are calibrated to ensure each pencil is identical in shape and size, ensuring a uniform product. After the pencils have been shaped, they are then sanded down. This process removes any excess wood and smoothens the surface of the pencil. It's a crucial step as it not only gives the pencil its well-known sleek look, but also prepares it for the next stage, painting. Now onto the painting process. The pencils are dipped into a bath of paint, which gives them their distinctive colors. Whether it's the classic yellow of a number two pencil or a vibrant red for a more artistic touch, this is the stage where the pencil truly starts to come alive. The paint also serves a practical purpose protecting the wood and helping to preserve the pencil over time. Once the paint has dried, the pencils are ready for their final adornment, the brand name. Each pencil is printed with the brand name, a mark of quality and assurance. This is usually done with a printing machine that imprints the brand name onto the paint in a contrasting color, ensuring it stands out and is easily recognizable. The shaping and painting process is a testament to the careful craftsmanship that goes into making each pencil. It's a blend of precision and artistry, turning simple materials into a tool that has been used for centuries to create, learn and communicate. Now that's starting to look a lot more like the pencil we know and love. A pencil isn't complete without a few finishing touches. Just as the final brush stroke completes a painting, so does the eraser complete a pencil. It's not merely an afterthought, but an integral part of the pencil, allowing for the correction of errors and the refining of ideas. It's a symbol of our ability to change, adapt and perfect. But how does it come to be attached to our pencil? The eraser, or as some might call it, the rubber, is attached using a small piece of metal known as a ferrule. This tiny component plays a vital role in our pencil's construction. The ferrule is crimped onto the pencil, creating a snug home for the eraser. This process requires precision and care, ensuring the eraser sits perfectly atop the pencil, ready to correct any missteps along the way. But the ferrule doesn't just hold the eraser, it also adds a touch of aesthetic charm to our pencil, often adorned with a shiny silver or gold finish. It's a small detail but one that enhances the pencil's overall appearance, transforming a simple writing tool into a thing of beauty. And now the final step in our pencil's journey, sharpening. This is where our pencil truly comes to life. The sharpener grinds away at the wood, revealing the lead inside. This process is a metamorphosis of sorts, transforming the pencil from a simple stick of wood into a tool of creation. The sharpening process is a careful one, requiring just the right amount of pressure to unveil the lead without breaking it. It's a delicate balance, a dance between the sharpener and the pencil. And with that, our pencil is complete. From a tree in the forest to a beautiful functional tool, the journey of a pencil is a remarkable one. It's a testament to human innovation and our ceaseless desire to create and communicate. And there you have it, a journey from tree to pencil. So. How can we summarize this intricate process? The journey of a pencil is a fascinating tale of craftsmanship and ingenuity. It all begins in the forest, where the perfect trees are selected and cut down. These trees are then transformed into timber, which is cut into precise slats. The slats are the backbone of our pencil, the structure that holds everything else together. However, the soul of the pencil the lead is yet to be created. This is a delicate process that involves a mix of graphite and clay, which is then heated to create the perfect writing material. This lead is then carefully inserted into the slats. Once the lead is in place, we move on to the shaping and painting phase. This is where the pencil truly starts taking its recognizable form, the slats are shaped into the familiar cylindrical form we all know and love and then painted in a myriad of colors. Finally, the last touch is added. The eraser. This little piece of rubber, often overlooked, is what allows us to correct our mistakes and keep our work neat. 
It's attached to the end of the pencil, completing the transformation from tree to writing instrument. Next time you pick up a pencil, remember the journey it's been through to reach your hand.